same thing in you because you're walking with them because you know you're greater than average. I'm greater than this. What is your heart telling you? What is your heart telling me? What is your heart telling you about it? Because I believe all of us on Facebook, we know some different ideology of God and we all do our own thing. And you can see everybody who does their own thing. We could do whatever we want and everybody will mention God. I'm with God. I'm a child of God. You can't fight, you can't fight me. I'm his child. I'm his child. You can't be a, I'm a, I'm a child of God. But really to say I'm a child of God, it means that God makes gods. How many of you know, and I'm going to let you go, how many of you know that God creates other gods? God doesn't make Christians. He makes God. God creates his offsprings are gods. But if I live beneath the God, I'm still claiming to be an offspring, but I don't want to be God. I want to be something beneath the God. God establishes God. God, God all of God's offspring share his nature. But what do you call yourself when you don't want to live the responsibility and the power of that nature? How many of you, before I let you go, because I know I'm probably be boring you, but how many of you, how many of you, are in love with your nature. I'm walking in that great nature, you see? And in this nature, there's no devil to blame it on. See, when you walk as a divine being, you stop blaming Satan. As of, all of a sudden, Satan disappears when you become this nature of God. And I believe a lot of people want to live average with a devil to blame and a God that will bless them. I'm doing what I can, God. I'm living average. But it's not a matter of getting brownie points. It means I'm not living up to my responsibility as a divine being. See, sin is not cussing. Sin is when I refuse to live the responsibility of my nature. So it means I'm missing the mark of myself. I'm missing the mark of myself. I'm missing the mark of myself. I'm falling short of the glory of myself. It says me all have sins and come short of the glory. It doesn't mean all have cussed, all have committed adultery, all have fornicated, all have cheated on taxes. All have at some point fail to live up to the responsibility of their divine nature so they fall short of the glory that's within them. What happens when you continue to resist who you are to live beneath the glory of you so you always live in what we call sin, not just cussing and lying and cheating and homonging and mongo whoring and stalling. No, I'm, I'm, I'm resisting the responsibility of my full nature. So why am I walking with God? What, what is my heart saying? When you want power, you live the responsibility of your nature because God creates gods. God does not create anything below him. God makes God. Just like all of us who are parents, all of our children are our nature. You didn't make a dog. You made another you. A dog makes another dog, a fish makes another fish, a cat makes a kitten, a bird makes another bird, a bug makes another bug, a bug doesn't make a tomato, a dog doesn't create a cat. I don't care how you put them, it doesn't create a cat. God can't create a Christian. God creates his beliefs. God doesn't create religion. God creates himself. God makes God. God creates God. God, but it's like that thing. It's like we fear the responsibility of the nature. And so Jesus was teaching 70 people to walk into the responsibility of the nature. And 58 says, no, I want to live like dust. I want to live eating the loaves. I do not want to live in this divine thing. So he lost 58 people. Sometimes you could be the greatest teacher in the world teaching people who don't want to live the responsibility of their nature. And so they left him. Sometimes people don't leave because you got a bad attitude. Sometimes people don't leave because you this and that you mean. No, sometimes people want to go to their kind. Sometimes people feel, see, if I'm walking with Christ, but I don't want the responsibility of the nature, he's not my kind. So I want, I will be attracted to my own kind. I, how many of you understand what I'm saying? I will be attracted to my own kind. See, when you are the, are the God kind, it doesn't mean you're deep. It doesn't mean you're better than anybody. It means that I'm living the responsibility of my nature. I don't want to fall short of my nature. I'm living the responsibility of my nature. Hello, everybody. Wayne, Dana, uh, KJ Kingdom, Jewel, uh, Dana, everybody, Yvette. 
everybody's on. I'm living the responsibility of my nature. I want to live my responsibility. It's not a matter that I'm trying to tiptoe, Cheryl. It's not the matter that I'm trying to tiptoe and not lie and not cuss. No, they'll have nothing to do with that. I am living the responsibility of my nature because God creates God. How you doing, Steve? I, I'm God, God creates himself, so I want to be the himself he created. But when we don't know that kind, it becomes a process and a struggle. As though living, how you doing, Myron? As though living for God is a process. No, when you live for God, you're living your kind. You're not trying to, see, Christian religion is not just about following Christ. It's about following a rule that makes us acceptable in the game. There is this big universal game. And so if I follow the rule, I become acceptable in the game. And the more you become God-like, the more the game despises you. I'm like, why did you despise me if I'm walking in my kind? See, Jesus lost 58 of his 70 disciples because they didn't feel that they were his kind. So Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. You are my kind. And they said, this man, who is this man who's wanting to give us his flesh to eat and blood to drink? He's speaking hard sayings. Who can do it? And the scripture in John 6 said they left and they never returned. There are some people who can walk with Christ, but they don't feel he's their kind. Excuses are their kind. Limitations are their kind. Poverty and sickness is average is their kind. So you can't walk with a Christ mind and expect a Christ mind to give you average. Christ's mind won't give you anything below himself. That's why Jesus said that the, your ancestors fed off of bread and manna and they were still hungry. He said, but I'm the eternal bread. If you eat me, you will never die. You will never die. You will never hunger for average. You will never die. If you consume me, you will never die. If you live your kind, you will never die. You will never die if you do it. How can I walk? See, you can walk with Jesus and want average. And so he, in, in order for him to be great, he has to give you a lot of average things. And I refuse to build anything that will give you a lot of token of average before you can declare God great. No, you need to stomach up and eat the great things. You need to eat the great meat. But maybe that's not your kind. See, God creates his kind and his kind goes back to him. See, God creates his own kind and his own kind returns to him. But when we forget who we are, we think the earth is our kind. And we begin to hunger for average. That's right. When we forget who we are. See, there's, see, you can still walk in religion and think you know who you are, but you really forgot who you are because religion will feed you dust, but the kingdom will give you meat. See, when you can't handle meat, you need dust. I need some entertainment. I need the little tinkly things. I need the little average things because I need God to give me some average things. I feel alone. I feel depressed. I need to do this. Here. See, we're still processing our humanity and our spirituality. We're still processing it because we don't know what kind we are. Because we're trained to think if I'm the God kind, I'm heavily minded and no earthly good. No, you're earthly significant when you understand who you are. Because when you know who you are, you're not looking for heaven. When you see only people who don't know who they are, go, they look for heaven as a prize. But those of us who know we're the God kind, we already own everything. See, when you know who you are, you own everything. You're not looking for heaven when you die. You have already owned everything. You're not looking. I'm just trying to make it to heaven. You're not looking for a benefit as though that's the carnival for Christians. No, when you know who you are, eternity is here. We bring heaven here, the kingdom to the earth. When we know who we are, we bring God here. We bring our Father here. When you don't know who you are, you look to run away. But when you remember who you are, you say, I plan to stay and build. Occupy. That's what we do. That's what we do. When you know you're kind. When you don't know you're kind, you eat dirt. And when you eat dirt, dirt gives you a desire for average. When you don't know you're kind, you seek average. I want God to give me trinkets. Then he's great. But if he says for me to, in, to, to master in my mind, if he tells me to be a great steward of the mysteries of my mind, I'm bored. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm tired because I want little trinkets. But he's wanting me to be a great steward of my mind. 
He wants me up. And if I know my mind, I have a frequency of everything and I own everything. I have power over the elements. The elements serve me. Your mind and your words serve him. See, as long as I resist my transformation, my words will resist to create. If I resist the power of transformation so I can remember who I am, my words will resist creating. See, when you resist transformation, your words resist manifesting. When I, the more I yield to what I remember, the more my words yield to what I remember. See, when I remember who I am, when I remember I'm the God kind, my words remember who I am and my words create when I remember who I am. But when I'm afraid to be what I am, my words going to be afraid to create. Jesus' words created because Jesus knew who he was. And so his words say, we're going to make every thing come true. So Jesus didn't have to work hard. But when you forget who you are, you have to toil and you got to play games and you got to fast. See, fast gives you a temporary disconnection from your carnality. Well, your fasting gives you a temporary disconnection and so your revelation is going to be temporary. But when you know who you are, you don't have to put food away because you, get, you got an eternal word. You understand, you don't have to become temporary just so you can get some great insight. There is a way you can be the insight all the time, but you got to be a steward of your mind. You got to be a steward of your mind. And I'm not coming against fasting, but I'm telling you something. When you remember who you are, everything else will remember you. When you remember, write that down and I'm going to let you go. When you remember who you are, the universe will remember you. When you remember who you are, it will remember who you've been. When you remember who you are, the atmosphere say, I remember you with God years, uh, years ago. Yeah, I remember you a long time ago. See, there is a way the atmosphere, see, that's why we get deja vu. It's the atmosphere saying, I remember you from a long time ago. I remember you, Andre. You weren't called Andre then. You were called this. See, that's what it is. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to let you go because I know it's raining and you're driving and you're at lunch. But the atmosphere will remember who you are when you remember who you are. And it'll say you were cold hearted. Let's begin to play again like we played again when we were children. See, Jesus wasn't creating a church like we think. Sunday morning, Saturday night, we got midweek. Nothing wrong with that. And sometimes we, the dust looks at the church that way. But the kingdom looks at the entire universe. See, when you, don't, when you don't know who you are, you look at church like this. But when you remember who you are, you look at church like this. When you don't know who you are, you look at church like this. But when you remember who you are, you know church like this. It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing, guys. You got to remember your kind. You got to remember your kind. You got to remember when you remember who you are. When you remember who you are, everything else will remember who you are too. And when you stop resisting your transformation, your words will stop resisting manifestation. So what does your heart say? You can walk with Jesus and won't average and he'll never fulfill you. It'll never fulfill you because I want something beneath him. And I find out that Jesus is where you go to get dead things. See, when you, you make God a dead idol, when you go to him to give you something dead, when you go to God to give you something dead, you forgot who he was. When you go to God to get something dead, you've forgotten who your father was. And see, when we forget who our father is, we die. We just die and we go broke. And we become anxious and we become angry and we become hurt because we forgot our father. And when you forget your father, you forget yourself. And a lot of people remember church, but they forgot their father. You remember the choir rehearsal, but you forgot your father. You remember preaching, but you forgot your father. And see, a lot of times when we talk like this, people think it's philosophy and it's little human talk. Let me tell you something. Jesus on the earth. And when Jesus was here, his preaching was like philosophy. When he talked, he was like a certain man had two sons. He didn't say go to John 5 and 4. He never really used that. He just said a certain man had this. And a certain man had that. That was a treasure right here. So when you own the earth, there was a power to make men remember. 
He say, teach men to observe all things that I've said. In other words, see if you could awaken men to remember what I shared with them before they were born, before I let you go. How many of you have a lifestyle that's causing people to remember what God 